Meet the Iron Enforcer. I don't want people to get to know me for my physical side. He's powerful. He's the most apparent. It's the spiritual side of me that's my best quality. In many ways. I'm only here to win the prize. If steroids are used for a positive thing, I think it's a good thing, no? All he has to do is wash under his arms and put on some deodorant. Who wants to be a superhero weekend on sci-fi? Hey, Steel, what's going on? Hey, hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Hey, you know how it is. We're hanging. <laughs> right <laughs> on. So uh, I know you haven't watched the show before, so we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves to you, uh, let the audience in on who you are, and then go ahead and jump right into it, if that's cool. Sure, sure. Awesome. So what's going on? My name's Xavier. My name's Ian. And oh, yeah, I'm... Who's this? Xavier. Xavier. Yeah. Hey, man. My name's Ian. You sound like a superhero character. Oh yeah, Professor X. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm I'm David. I'm the one you've been texting with and uh, messaging on Instagram. Yeah, Dave. Hey, Dave. What's up, man? Not a whole lot. So uh. So what's happening? Not a whole lot. Uh, you know, the other day I rewatched, binge watched all of Who Wants to Be a Superhero, caught up on it, and I mean, you just kind of stood out, and we've been talking to a lot of people over Zoom, and. Thought you'd be a good conversation. Thought we could, you know, get some answers from you. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, as you saw. Although, in the beginning, <clears throat> I took it very serious, as you saw. <laughs> I take everything serious. So that's just how I am. And um, the director of the, of the show even said to me, you're a very serious guy. Uh, I said, I take everything serious. That's how I am, <laughs> you know. I didn't realize it was a reality kind of script kind of thing, you know? I didn't know that. So I don't think any of us did. Were you expecting it to be more just straight-up reality, or were you expecting it to be more scripted? No, I thought it was going to be a real, serious reality show. Yeah. Um, I kind of got the idea the first day of filming, when they had us running through to find that girl you saw. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Just a screaming girl in a park. Well, we all had to pick numbers, uh, one to ten, and who would ever go first would be the first one up to find the girl. And I remember uh, the time was going pretty quickly, and I picked number ten. So I was the last guy. So I was sweating my balls off because <laughs> everyone picked a place that I wanted, you know? Right. I was, run I was running out of spots to hide. Holy shit, he just took my spot, motherfucker. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so by the eighth time, the eighth person who went, the director kept I'm saying to his crew, gotta hurry up, gotta hurry up. Oh, shit, I have no spot left. So then finally, by when came time to do me, he said, hey, steal, man, do me a favor. Just run into that corner and uh, hide over there, and we'll get you over there. I mean, wait a minute. I thought it was supposed to be a real thing here. <laughs> right. He's telling me where to go. Uh, okay, maybe there's something more to it, you know. <laughs> so, and that's what happened. I kind of got the idea they were going for a more uh, combination script, real thing, you know. Gotcha. So, um, so you caught on pretty quick. Did everyone else seem to catch on pretty quick, or were they a little bit, you know, slower to? Well, the only one, the only, the only one who really knew it was bullshit kind of thing was Major Victory. Okay, yeah. Because in, in the audition process, she was cracking jokes on camera. <laughs> and I'm like, it's supposed to be serious. What's this guy cracking jokes for? There's no way they're going to pick him. And then sure enough, he got picked. And I'm like, he's always joking around. I'm like, wait a minute here. I should lighten up a little more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still wasn't sure. I was still being serious, as I always do, competition. And uh, you know how it is. It's, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bodybuilder by trait. Always in competition mode. Right, yeah, exactly. You know? Uh, um, what else? Uh, so I guess that kind of leads into my next question is, you know, you're eliminated episode two, but immediately at the end of the episode, they have the scripted, or it seemed probably scripted, you can tell me, of the moment with you going through the alley and Stan asks you to be the villain of the show. So that wasn't something you had pre-discussed oh, or pre-planned yeah, at all? Oh, that was a that was. That was a great, great night for me, man. Let me tell you, I didn't know it was coming. I didn't know. <laughs> and when I was on that roof top, I can't tell you how cold it was. 
I was squeezing my balls off. On that and, and you're shirtless the whole time, too. I was shaking like, I can't tell you, man. I was dying. And um, we were up there over an hour. Dang, yeah. <laughs> the, only one kept, the only one that kept me going was uh, Nitro. He was making me laugh my ass off. <laughs> and even he was freezing. He was cracking jokes. Um, he saw me smirking next to him on camera. You see, because he was cracking jokes the whole time. And we were just laughing our brains off with him. And then finally, um, when I got booted off, I was kind of shocked. He booted me off. I was a little pissed, a little booted off. And I, hey, what am I going to do? I go downstairs. And then the director, producer Scott, was down there with his uh, secretary. He said, Skeel, Skeel, come here. I'll talk to you for a minute. I said, what's up? He said, listen, how would you like to be the villain on the show? Are you kidding me? I said, you serious? Yeah, yeah. I want you to be the villain, man. But you got to do me a favor. You got to come back every day, nonstop. But I, you got to make sure you're here. Yeah, yeah, of course I'll be here. Are you kidding me? It's the best part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, I was so, wow. I went home that night. I couldn't sleep the whole night. I was like, wow. I can't believe it. That's the best part to play the villain. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know what to expect. So I got there bright and early the next day. Sure enough, that was the scene with the van. Remember the van scene? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really pissed right now about this whole thing. Stanley throwing me out. It's ridiculous. You think Fat Woman is a superhero? You must be kidding me. Hey, Iron Enforcer. During your makeover, something was bothering me, and I couldn't put my finger on it. But now I know exactly what it is. You make a lousy superhero, but you'd make a great supervillain. Really? Spider-Man had the Green Goblin. Superman had Lex Luthor. I want you to be the new supervillain of this show. You can help me test your former competitors to see if they've really got what it takes. Yeah. How would you like to help me make their lives extremely difficult? I would love it. Can I give you the makeover you really deserve? A supervillain makeover? Sure. Good. Ladies. <laughs> Life for our superheroes is about to change when they meet my newest creation, the Dark Enforcer. Oh man, that was the greatest scene ever. We, we shot that at nighttime with the director, and we did that scene about. Mm, five or six times, I'd say. And I still didn't know what it was about until the final editing. I didn't see the blast of the electricity and the lightning. and You know, I didn't see any of this. Um, so I didn't see that. I mean, I just did it. It was a cool scene. I said, wow, it's cool. And I remember doing it the first couple of times, and the inside of the van was locked. It was stuck. The door was stuck. <laughs> <laughs> could, we couldn't get out. It was so funny. Cut. He said, cut. <laughs> we did it like four or five times, four or five times, and then finally we got it really good. And I didn't get to see that scene until the end after we finished everything. They brought me back to see some of the footage. Oh, man, it was so cool. I said, God damn, it was so cool. Nice. Um, it was fun, you know. Yeah, it seems a lot better than being told yeah. what to do, like like to told where to hide. You get to kind of mess with all the people that are in that position you didn't want to be in. Man, I, I remember when I had to see each one of them on the roof. I remember they were all blindfolded, and I had to kind of guide them. Right, the with the, the one where they think they're, like, going across the buildings, and then they're, they're really not. Yeah. Yeah. 
when we, when we were all still wired up, microphone, and uh, we all thought we were being recorded, so we can't say nothing. But some of them, when I was I had I had a hold of them on the roof, you know, dressed up as a villain. They turned around quietly and he said to me, "You fuck him, you so lucky, you damn motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, you can't believe how happy I am, but just shut up and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember uh, I did the big reveal. And I walked down the steps, coming down for the big reveal. And uh, I had the mask on, the villain mask. I was walking down the steps. The lights downstairs were flickering, remember? I was coming down. Mm -hmm. I remember coming down and standing in front of him. And uh, revealing the mask. I said, you motherfuckers, all you, especially you and you and you. I kept doing it back and forth. <laughs> and when, when it was all over, I think it was one of the girls said to me, oh, I knew that was you under there. I could tell by the way you walk. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty cool. That was fun. And, uh, yeah, I had a good time, you know. Yeah, so, and you'd been acting for a little bit before that and, you know, short films and some other stuff. You think that helped prepare you to yeah, be the Dark Enforcer? I started, I, started back, I, I started back in Miami in about, uh, I'd say, the year 2000, I would say, around that time. Uh, a lot of commercials in Miami, uh, a bunch of independent films. I had a nice piece on Bad Boys 2. Nice. Bad Boys 2? Uh, uh, you're going to fight them. <laughs> what I'm going to do ain't even going to be legal. <laughs> I might be up in here with these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? fuck you looking at? I was in Bad Boys 2. My picture you'll see on my Instagram, you'll see the picture there on I, Bad Boys 2. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, we'll definitely put that up yeah, in the video. <laughs> yeah, I played, I, played, I played the prisoner, remember, in an orange jumpsuit. It's right been now. a long time since I've seen it. I didn't even... I don't even think I saw that on your IMDb. That's crazy. Yeah, it was right, it was right in the middle, right in the middle of the uh, the movie, where they're talking to each other. Uh, uh, Will Smith and uh, Lawrence, um, they were talking to themselves, and they said, "Oh man, my my sister dates big motherfuckers like this guy over here. <laughs> he can't even wipe his own ass. Remember that?" Uh, Vaguely, I'm gonna rewatch Bad Boys 2 uh, right after this. <laughs> yeah, I kind of gave him a look, and because uh, the director uh, Michael Bay said to me, "Don't say nothing, don't do nothing, just react." And that was it. Had to be quiet. So uh, it was pretty cool. You know, Everything awesome. leads to something else, you know. Very cool. And so, like before yeah. you did the acting, you were a bodyguard bouncer. Do you have any cool stories from that? You protected well, any actually, cool celebrities? Um, well, I went to college for pharmacy. Right, you have two uh, science so degrees. Science. Huh? You have multiple science degrees, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> let you know that. I have, a, I have a science and chemistry degree, and uh, I was a compounder, and I used to counsel patients, and I used to uh, manage a pharmacy. And then uh, I got bored of that. I moved <laughs> off to Miami. And ever since I was in college, you know, I was doing bouncing in clubs and bodyguarding over the years. And all that took me to Miami. I was still going to bouncing and bodyguarding. And then uh, someone just saw me. I said, hey, man, I want you in my independent film. You might have a good look. I said, yeah, I always want to do that. People were telling me for years I should be into acting. Took the opportunity. I enjoyed it. And things just started coming my way with acting. So... Um, moved to Miami, got an agent, and things were really going. I was getting a lot of stuff out there, while still doing my bouncing and bodyguarding and all. And then, uh, <clears throat> um, long story what happened with how I moved to California. Um, I don't know if you have time, but it was really cool. We have all I, the time in the world, uh, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'll tell you a really interesting story, how my name still came about. So Steel Chambers and, is not your birth name. Huh? So Steel Chambers is not your birth name. No, Eric is my real name. Eric. Oh, okay. Hey, Eric. <laughs> so, hey, bud. So, <laughs> when I was in uh, the pharmacy world back in the days, um, I had long hair. I used to have very long hair. I used to work behind the counter dispensing medication and all. 
and uh, an artist came up to the pharmacy and said to me, "Hey man, I want to I want to use your image. I want you to come over. I'm going to draw you for a character called Lobo, a superhero character." I said, "Lobo, I never heard of him. Yeah, you look like him, so I want to draw you up. You know, yeah, sure, I'll do it." He drew me up, and I went to the comic book store. I want to see who this Lobo character was. So the guy, yeah, he looked like me, big guy, long hair, chiseled face. Uh, wow, pretty cool. Mm. I picked up the uh, the, uh, the comic book. It was wrapped in plastic. I never really looked at it. I put it away in my closet. I didn't bother. It's in my closet. Years go by. You're talking about six years go by. And um, I was I was watching a, a movie. Um, one of the superior movies in Miami. It was a rainy night. And this is why I was calling myself Steel at the time, Steel Chambers. I had just started calling myself Steel. I was getting into acting and all. I decided to go in to see uh, the X-Men. I'm watching the movie. I'm saying, these guys in the X-Men, it was nothing like what I would look like. I mean, I'm a big guy. I should be in these movies. What the hell is going on, you know? <laughs> I only see small dudes in these movies, so I got a little depressed. I went home, rainy night. I started cleaning out my closet. And I go, go open to my closet. I'm cleaning out stuff. I'm throwing shit away. I come across this comic book that I got years ago, this Lobo comic book. And I just looked in the ceiling and I said, man, God, I said... Should I be doing the acting? I mean, I need a sign that I'm doing the acting or not. I'll, I'll stick to bodyguarding. I'll get back in the pharmacy, whatever. I mean, I don't want to stick with this shit. Give me a sign. So I go in my closet. I'm pulling out stuff. I see the comic book. Let me look through it. I never looked through it before. I open up the plastic. I flip through the pages. The last page was a big ball guy. The name on it was Steel. I went, holy shit. <laughs> I'm getting chills thinking about it now. That was my sign. Steel. In other words, stick with it. And sure enough, I stuck with it. I went to California years later. And when I got the call to do the superhero show, I couldn't believe it. It's exactly what I was supposed to be doing. That sign I had in Miami years before was Steel. So all tying into superhero stuff. And that's where it all started, you know? That's cool. That's pretty awesome, wild. man. Pretty wild. Yeah, that's a good origin story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So that's yeah, that was that. So did that kind of lead you into the Who Wants to Be a Superhero? Because I know superhero movies weren't as big as they are now. Uh, Who Wants to Be a Superhero was 2006, I think. So you had the uh, yeah. first two Spider-Mans, I think. You have... Uh, the Eric Bana Hulk, and you have X Men, and really, other than that, not a whole lot of successes. Even the Hulk didn't do very well. Uh, so right. right, there weren't many superhero movies out at the time. It was still coming up, and um, it's very difficult to get into these movies. It really is. I mean, you got to know people. You really do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Hollywood's all about knowing people, and it's a very selfish industry. I mean, I even, uh, you know, years, a couple of years after Superhero Show, I was talking to uh, Stan Lee's partner, Gil Champion. He said to me, hey, man, uh, what you been up to? I said, I'm still doing the acting, the bodyguard and stuff like that. He goes, give me a call. I want to talk to you, maybe. Give me his card. I thought maybe he'll hook me up with one of the movies, you know? Yeah. Never got, could never get in touch with the guy. I emailed him, I called him, nothing. Damn. Yeah, they don't, they all thought bullshit, so... Yeah, you want to do something in Hollywood, you got to make it yourself. you got to produce yourself and do it yourself. That's really what it's all about. You know? For sure. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be producing my own stuff soon. Nice. i got producing stuff. I'm going to work on some graphic novels. The Iron Enforcer graphic novels should be coming soon. Um, i got a few other characters I'm working on. Um, I want to open up a couple of museums. Oh, wow. A uh, couple of things. Yeah, I want to help out uh, underprivileged families in need, children who can't afford to go to, say, Disney World. They can't afford I'm going to open up some kind of an amusement park where they can come in and for free and do something for them. Uh, 
work on a lot of stuff now. I do a lot of voiceover work. I do that. Um, I'm working on my second book um, called uh, Beyond the Velvet Ropes, which is a book about my years in the bodyguarding and balancing in the clubs. Oh, right on. Um, <laughs> in three major cities, New York, Miami, and L.A. And I'll be working on uh, that's, that book is out now. The second book is coming out next year. Book two, more stories and more stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun stuff going on. This COVID-19 stuff is hard. You can't do nothing, really. You can't have meetings. Right. Yeah, it was just a little, you got to wait for this stuff to pass over. I still dress up in car- as characters in conventions. They hire me. The video game companies hire me to dress up as their character. I go around. I terrorize people. <laughs> <laughs> you see the video on my Instagram, the uh, Lords of the Fallen um, video is up there. Um, it's a four-minute video of what I do in the conventions. I dress up in characters. It's pretty cool. Pretty yeah, that's a fun, that sounds like a really fun gig. <laughs> yeah, I mean you've got oh, a great it, look and great but physique. Because, now, because of the well, because of the COVID stuff, convention stopped. Right. Yeah. So this year there's nothing going. on. I have to wait till next season, next uh, spring starts up again. So I get some calls to dress up as more characters from the companies, and we'll see where that goes. You know. <clears throat> yeah. Sounds like you got a pretty full plate though. Pretty. A lot, a lot yeah, of stuff I'm in the all, works. You know, well, now that we're home, you know, with all the stuff going on, I have a lot of stuff I'm doing pre-planning for when it all blows over, get everything going, get all my connections in place, and uh, move quickly. There's a lot of time wasted just sitting around doing nothing here. Yeah. Um, so I want to get moving quickly, uh, hopefully by November or by January or something. Then we'll start moving quick. Get shit done. Oh, yeah. 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 So do you uh Real quick. So I'm assu- uh so yeah, I'm assuming in your graphic novel you're gonna be the iron enforcer, not the dark enforcer, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. I didn't come up with the dark enforcer. Okay. So you don't have uh, you didn't get that costume? We were wondering about that. Wait, the uh dark enforcer? Yeah, did they give you do you have that or did they did they take that costume back? Who the hell would want that piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I was making fun of it. The first day I wore it, and the, uh, the lady, the costume lady, didn't like it too much. I was breaking on her. And she got offended when I was making fun of mine and Tyveculus' costume. She didn't like it either. <laughs> well, Tyveculus' was bad. It was an ugly ass costume, but I said, Jesus. <laughs> and she didn't like that too much. But, uh, <laughs> the other one uh, is my costume, my gun. And I actually have it, I still have the gun. Um, actually, I put it at an auction house, <laughs> but I didn't really need it, but I'm going to get it back from them. It's still sitting there. Oh, yeah. man. If I had that, it'd be up on the mantle. That'd be like <laughs> the centerpiece of the uh, room. What's that? Oh, I just said if I had that gun, it'd be like up on a mantle. It'd be the centerpiece of the room. It'd be a focus. It'd be an attraction in my place. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's how I need to get it. I'm going to get it back and put it in a showcase. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hired one of the prop guys on the show to help me fix the gun up because <clears throat> things started getting a little rickety and wobbly and <clears throat> you know, standing in my room for a couple of years got a little bit more rickety and uh, so I'll fix it up for you. So he, he kind it up really nice. So it's all pretty good. Nice to have, you know? Yeah. So is there anyone oh, yeah. from, from the show that you'd work with again to do like uh, like to be in your graphic novel or something like that? We need to put in. Um, I haven't thought about that, but I I, do, I did work with um, what's her name? The uh, the blonde girl. I forgot her name. Uh, self, her character name. Cell phone girl creature. 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 Yeah. Me and creature. <clears throat> we we worked together on a couple projects. Um, we went to Texas. We did a uh, a big show for some um, computer company. I think it was Best Buy. That's my uh, story. They had a big show in Texas, and we did a whole huge show, put on a big act for them. Sun fighting involved, and she did her thing with fire and whatever the hell, ropes. It was cool. <laughs> Spent a couple of days, a few days out there. Um, the other ones, I don't talk much unless I see them at conventions. Okay. 
Um, I know, uh, what's her name? Um, what's her name? Uh, Lemurio. Lemurio and I do signings together sometimes. Um, I mean, she, she was still trying to get into act. I don't know what happened with her. Um, I don't think it worked out too much. It might have. I don't know. Um, they promised to work on my comic book after the show was over. I like everything else. They don't care after the show. <laughs> um, they said they liked my character out of all of them. So they, they, they were talking to me a little bit about it afterwards, but they didn't follow through with it. Dang. Well, and even, even Stan Lee, like Stan Lee thought my character was so unique. He loved it. He said, wow, that's never been done before. Even the gun, the weapon was never done before, the way you've described it. Great idea, he said. And that was it. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, and, yet. <laughs> and that's funny, because right they after nice who... Pat, they, 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 give, they give me a nice pat on the back. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, because right after you who know. wants to be a superhero, you know, you have the Batmans start coming out. Yeah. And, you know, everything started moving a little bit darker and grittier, and it almost seems like that would have been the perfect opportunity to do an Iron Enforcer, uh, something a little bit more violent, a little tougher. Well, than... but you see, you have to understand Hollywood. Hollywood doesn't really like to take a chance on new faces and on the big screen. Right, yeah. See, what they do is they always hire actors with a huge following because they know They'll get, they'll get the people to buy the tickets right away with a huge following, you know? I mean, uh, you have to do it yourself, really, uh, as an independent kind of thing, or do it in a show in a small theater. I mean, to do a huge production, they're not going to put money like that into it. They're not, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm, I have a big name now in the comic book world and the sci-fi world, but I'm not an A-list actor. You know, they want A-list actors to be the main person in the film and that would do a lot of tickets to make a lot of money, you know? Yeah. Cause they want people That's that how the industry is. Cause they want people that it doesn't even matter what the movie is. People are just going to go for certain actors. That's right. Yeah. My mother was upset. She said, oh, I think you would do good. <laughs> but <laughs> but you know, realistically in the Hollywood world, they want somebody with a huge following. That's all oh, 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 the stars of uh, big movies. You know? Yeah. Well, and I think we kind of sure. saw that because <clears throat> Feedback, who eventually goes on to win the show, and the prize, which would have been awesome, was your own sci-fi original movie. And I thought that would have been great if they did a Feedback movie and brought you in as the villain or as a hero who turned into the villain. But he didn't even get his movie. He got to appear in some giant snake movie. Uh, did they ever talk to you or you know, see if you were interested in playing the villain in Feedback's like movie? I said, they hyped you up throughout the show. Dang. Once the show is over... It's goodbye. You wow. Know? Yeah. We... That's just how it is. That's, that's the industry, you know? Yeah. We... I mean, we... uh, I'm going to be contacting Universal. I want to get my the rights to my character back. Since they don't do nothing with it, I want it back. I want to do something with it. Yeah, so definitely. I'm going, to be hiring, I'm going to be hiring an entertainment attorney to get the rights back. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, uh, it's, kind of, it's under the shelves with them. They don't care. <clears throat> so... I want to get it back. Definitely, yeah. That's bogus that they just yeah. have it sitting, collecting <laughs> dust. They don't care. No one, Hollywood doesn't care. They don't give a shit. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's normal. Yeah. Right, and so it's Universal who owns it? It's not Marvel or Sci-Fi? What's that? It's Universal who owns the character right now, technically, legally speaking, not yeah. Marvel and or... Universal. Universal are the ones who own it technically. Okay. Um, yeah, well, we're rooting for you there. Good luck with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So, is it just film well, rights? So you're still, I mean, you know, if I have, I have other ideas, I could change the name around. I could change a little bit of the story around. Um, I have a few ideas. I always write. I have a lot of good ideas to write for a story. I'm a story writer. Great ideas. <clears throat> I have a few characters in mind. I'm always writing stories up, so I could change things around a little bit. I mean, if I have to, but I would still like to have the character back. Yeah. <clears throat> the original name of the character was just the Enforcer. And uh, we all had original names before we even started the show. And before we actually started filming, they took us into a room, and they said, well, 
some of you guys have characters that we can't use because <laughs> it's been done before. And I was like, oh, man, I hope it's not mine, man, because I like my name. And it turns out that the actor, what's his name from, um, the guy that the mayor of Carmel, what's his name? Well, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, uh, the actor, Dirty Harry. You know who he is. Uh... He played Dirty Harry. Oh, I'm drawing such a blank. Not Eastwood, right? Eastwood, Clint Eastwood. That's okay. It. Oh, okay. So Clint Eastwood yeah. did a movie called The Enforcer. And I said, oh, shit. He said, don't worry, Stan Lee has a name for you. And also Nitro. He changed Nitro to Nitro D. Mm. And I think somebody else he changed. Well, with me, he goes, I'm going to call you the Iron Enforcer. I went, hey, you know what? <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> that works, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was cool. I, I, I was happy to take it. <laughs> so, so just yours was taken, not like Fat Mama's? <laughs> <laughs> Fat Mama, no. Fat Mama is a unique character of her own. Um, yeah, I thought that was a joke, too. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I said, well, all these crazy names, and it's, I thought it was supposed to be a serious show. <laughs> so I guess well, I'm taking this shit too serious here. <laughs> I should lighten up a little bit. <laughs> and, I mean, you still looked like you had fun. I mean, you were farting on people and laughing and having a good time, but you still uh, carried yourself you know seriously. What? You I took was, yourself seriously. You know what? Even though time the camera rolls I take it serious you know it's, it's work no matter what it's work and people will see your work and you know either you get more work from it or say this guy's a sucker so <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything I do everything you do you have to be serious that's just how it is you know <laughs> even though you know even if you're a low life mopper in the street and then on the building take that work serious you, know, you go places you know you might be the manager or somewhere Everything you do, you gotta take serious. That's what you have to do, no matter how small the work is. <clears throat> you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Good piece of advice, man. <laughs> yeah. You know. Any other questions you have? I'm here. Yeah. So you, <laughs> you mentioned the graphic novel earlier. Is there anything you can tell us about it, or is it all kind of top secret right now? Um, I'm just gonna do the storyline of the Iron Enforcer, the whole origin of the Iron Enforcer. Um, cause that's how it all started. I had an idea for a terminator like character before it was a comic book character. I had a script I worked on with my buddy and, uh, we typed it up and it was sat in my drawer for, uh, I don't know, a year. And it was called Freedom Fighter is what the name of it was. <clears throat> and, uh, I had it, stopped there and then I got the call to come up with a superhero character. They said, hey, got a good look. Come up with a superhero character and we'll get you, we'll see if we can get you on. And I said, oh shit. <laughs> I had the Freedom Fighter idea. Made some changes on it, more superhero like. And uh, I said, hmm, Freedom Fighter sounds a little bit too corny. So I said, let me change that around to the Enforcer. And that's what happened. I submitted my story, got my uh, costume character. I'm my costume creator. Oh, that's awesome. I, the guy, the guy who made the gun. Nice. I forgot his name, but he's on the IMDb, I believe. His name is on it, who made the gun. Okay. I, I remember in the audition, the gun was all rickety and screwy. It was wobbly. And I said to the guy who made the gun, I said, bro, this is very serious for me and for you. I need you to make this gun tight, working perfectly. I can't be on camera with this thing wobbly and shit like that. <laughs> real. So, so he made it tighter as it can be. I got on. It was as good as can be. While we were filming the superhero show, every day it was like wildly getting fucked up. And yeah, so running around with it. On the show, yeah, it was messing up. I was getting pissed off. So some girl on the show, she was a prop lady. She would fix it every day for me, make it nice and tight. So it worked out until after the show. I ended up getting someone from the show to really redo the whole gun, and he got it back to me really nice, so it's all good. Nice. Yeah. 
Oh. You, you got anything? For you. <laughs> so this be behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> So this next one's probably a little off topic, but it's one of my favorite questions to just kind of ask, especially our more physically fit guests, our more entertaining guests. You've got a great physique. You're 6'4", 6'5", absolutely yoked, very expressive, very entertaining. Did you ever think about pro wrestling as a career at all? Well, here's the thing. Many, many years ago, um, when I was into training and all, going to college, I had long hair. Yeah, I got asked all the time to be in WWE. BWF. Right, because you were in New York there. We're, they're based out of, you know, you got this garden there. Well, big yeah, shows happen in New York. Big wrestling, WWE, actually WWF back then. I went with a buddy of mine. I had my long hair, my big arms, and all this shit <laughs> going around in the hallways to the wrestling match. And someone came up to me and said, uh, hey, you want to meet, what's his name? Uh, Vince McMahon. He's getting into wrestling. <laughs> but a lot of people don't know. Is in my family there's a hereditary trait of lower bad backs. Oh, Ooh. yeah, and taking bumps so and I stuff. Always had, I, I always had a bad back, you know, growing up in training, and I still train to it. And um, so I figured I was out. So I couldn't get into that. It's too much thrown around. I didn't want to. I like working out too much. I didn't want to do one match. Now it'd be the end of me. Yeah. yeah. So, but I like doing action films, um, independent action films. Uh, I had some really cool stuff I did. You see the pictures on my Instagram page and some stuff. Um, cool stuff, yeah. But now, I guess I do more convention character work, um, some voiceover work, and uh, that keeps me busy. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like it. Definitely. <laughs> so. You have a, yeah, very much a tendency to have people just approach you in the street and say, you have a great look. I mean, <laughs> three stories I think we've covered today is just people saying, you look great. Like, do you want to do this? <laughs> well, you know, well, you know, many, many years, when I was 20 years old, that's when it all started. I would just be walking down the street, going to college, and I'd be on the train, and I'd see Japanese tourists taking my picture in the train station <laughs> in Manhattan. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? I mean, they would always take my pictures, and I mean, they would say, hey, you have a great look, man. You should do something. I'm like, I don't know how to do that stuff. You know, I'm going to college for pharmacy. And then uh, some casting director saw me in the pharmacy one day, and he said, hey, you want to do a commercial audition? I said, no, I don't want to do that stuff. You kidding me? I don't, I don't have to. I'll do that stuff. Just come on. You tell you just show your body. That's it. Just show your look. The Pepsi commercial. All right, what do I got to lose? I went down. And let me tell you something. It was a Heinz ketchup commercial. And she had an oak tag full of lines to say. And I said to the casting director, I, I was told just to show up. <laughs> I'm not prepared for this. I don't, I don't know how to do this. She was try. Sure enough, I fucked it up. I, I couldn't do well. <laughs> I left. But once again, people kept telling me over and over. You got to get into acting, man. You should have a good look. And I, uh, I ended up moving to Miami a couple of years later. And again, they see me in the streets. Some guy approached me. The guy said to me, hey, man, you got a good look. I'm doing an independent film. You want to play the body, the lead bodyguard in my film? You got to say nothing. You just got to be in it in the scene. Yeah, why not? I'll do it, sure. He picked up, he got me in a limousine every morning. Whew. I'm like, damn, a limousine, <laughs> oh my, oh wow, I said, I got it picked up, they fed me, and um, he said to me, um, uh, hey man, uh, I said to him, listen, oh, I remember we were filming the, the, the film, somewhere during the filming, at the time I couldn't afford to pay my rent. I said, man, I, I, said, I said, Gil, he's the director, I said, Gil, I'm gonna to have to leave the, the production because I can't. I'm. Leave. I gotta move out of my place. I have to go back to New York. I said, don't leave. Don't <laughs> leave. I'll pay your bill. Damn. Wow. <laughs> a few hundred bucks. Paid my bill. We finished the film. Right after that, I started getting work. I got an audition for a commercial, Pepsi commercial. Boom. Out a local uh, fast food chain commercial. Boom. It was coming like crazy. Oh my god. I, I worked so many commercials and some independent films. Bad Boys 2 came. 
This was all meant to be. So that's what happened. I stayed in. And then when I saw that picture of the steel comma for character, that was it. I said, it's time for me to go to California. To California, and again, I'm getting work, auditions. It was common like crazy. And that's when it all started, you know. Um, you never know how things develop. So, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So, like, with with your look and, you know, all the stuff you've done, do you get recognized a lot on the street just by random people saying, like, hey, Iron Enforcer, can I get a picture? Or, hey, Steel, can I get yeah, a picture? I, I, still, I still do. Yeah, I do. Nice. <laughs> I get older people. I get, I get, um, I, I get, uh, one time I got kids at a fast food chain. They were screaming for me at, uh, <laughs> Carl's Jr. one day. <laughs> I said, holy shit, I had to sign all the autographs from kid in Hollywood, walking down the street in Hollywood. Said, oh my God. I wrote on his t-shirt and he walked a block away. He was screaming in the streets. I got his oh my God. <laughs> I got a guy, I had moving guys and they're moving trucks driving by in the streets. Open up the truck, the back truck. Hey man, you're the guy from the uh, superhero show. You know, I still get it. I still do. Yeah, especially when I go to conventions. Right. Oh my God. All the kids come up to me, all the guys that they want to say hello, I'll take pictures. I said, oh, why, you still remember me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be cool. Though, even, uh, you know who recognized me, too? I was working uh, after the show. I was still doing my bouncing and bodyguarding. Wesley Snipes came up to me. Wow. Damn. He said to me, hey, man, I saw you. I was in my hotel room, and I saw you on a... On a commercial spot oh, I think it's for the whole show and uh, I was somewhere in Romania I saw you man good job you know good job of course I said to him hey maybe you can help me out get me in so <laughs> you know what his response was what he says you got a face that's very rememberable basically trying to say no in a nice way <laughs> <laughs> got a memorable face Thanks, buddy. That was the end of that. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So I just had to call my friends at the IRS, and I took care of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm okay. laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I get recognized still. It's pretty cool. It's nice. Fun. That's really cool. You got anything else? I got like yeah. two more questions. I think I'm. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, my first one is. You know, obviously, who wants to be a superhero? A very cool opportunity, a chance to work with Stan Lee. Uh, do you have any cool stories about Stan Lee? I know he passed about a year ago. Time is messed up with me in this whole pandemic. Yes. Yeah, but, like I mean, what was that just emotional process to meet someone so impactful and creative and just important well, to entertainment? The, the only one really on the set who was Gaga over Stan Lee it was Nitro. And, uh, the guy who won, what's his name? Feedback? <clears throat> Feedback. Those two guys were flipping out. And uh, I remember after uh, we had a break, and uh, Nitro came up with three comic books. And he was shaking in his pants. <laughs> he wanted Stanley to sign his autograph to it. And, uh, yeah, he signed it. He snatched it. couldn't take it no more. We couldn't believe it. He walked out. <laughs> Um, he was really nice, very funny guy, so smart, bright, great, always smiling. <clears throat> and when I used to see him at the conventions, yeah, he stopped everything just to say hello to me. I would be walking by while he had his line of people signing autographs. And I would just wave to him from the back. And he'd scream my name out. He'd say, oh, wow. He goes, it's my bodyguard. <laughs> wow. And I'd wave. And then one time, I remember some convention, I, the last time I saw him, he was signing again with a big line of people. I went behind everybody, behind the stage kind of thing. And I told the security guy, I said, just tell Stan Lee that his bodyguard is here. Oh. He was okay. He went up to Stan Lee, he whispered in his ear, and Stan Lee's partner was there too, Gil Champion. And he said, oh, you know, I guess you your bodyguard. He turned to the left, he saw me. They all flipped out. And uh, on the gill, come in. I came in from everybody. People were cheering. <laughs> it was really funny. And I said, there, I took his hand. How you been? How you doing? 
So I'm doing good. I said, how are you feeling? I said, this is looking good. Well, I'm doing okay. You know, small talk. And that's it. And that was all. And that's when Gil gave me his business card. and said, hey, man, give me a call. Give me a call. And, uh, and nothing came from that. But just, you know, just said hello. It was nice. Yeah. And that was it. Very cool. So oh, yeah. last one, and yeah. it might t- touch on something a little bit controversial here. So again, if you don't like it, you don't want to talk about it, we can totally cut it out. Uh, there is a scene, and I can't remember if it's the first or second episode, where everyone is kind of airing their grievances about the other heroes. <laughs> and you know, people yeah, kind yeah. of attack you for using steroids, for, for using for steroids. Someone wants to know, the Iron Enforcer seems to be on steroids. Is that legal? <laughs> Well, if steroids are used for a positive thing, I think it's a good thing, no? What the hell? Are you kidding me? I look better than anyone else in this house. How dare they single me out when they're the ones with all the problems? And yeah, uh, yeah. that was an interesting moment to me because, I mean, I grew up a huge baseball fan and my dad was always very anti-steroid, but that's a competition. And I've never really had an issue with uh, steroids in general, especially for just weightlifters and bodybuilders who aren't doing it for competition, who are doing it for their physique, for their health. Um, can you kind of touch on that? And, you know, not everything that's illegal uh, is wrong, and not everything that's wrong. wrong is illegal. Yeah. Any, any, anything you do to the extreme is going to be bad for you. Right. I mean, if you, if you go check out this movie, Bigger, Stronger, Faster, you'll see in the movie... You have sports, sports guys are on it, Olympic athletes are on it, football players, basically, you know, you don't even have to look good. You look at the guy, um, the bike rider who got called for that. Armstrong? You know, Armstrong. He got busted. You don't have to be humongous, but he gives you an edge. Right. Yeah. I mean, you have uh, Barry Bonds, uh, McGuire, I think his name was. Yeah. It's a part of life. It's a part of sports. It's a part of, you know, when you're an athlete, you got to go. You got to do a little bit. You need a little more of an edge. I mean, my family is tremendous. I don't really need it. I don't. I quit genetics. But, I mean, uh, you want to do your best. You know, I'm in the acting business where my body is the thing. Hey, listen, as long as you're the doctor, get checkups. You think the rock is natural? Come on. <laughs> go, you go online, look at some pictures of the rock. I mean, he's, he's skinny, and then you see some big pictures. You know, it's all different. Yeah, back when he was Rocky Maivia, I mean, he was flying around the ring with the streamers on and shit. Do you think Arnold Schwarzenegger would be famous if he didn't take steroids? <laughs> That's a great on. point, actually. The guy, the guy he's, he's, look at Lou Ferrigno. All these guys are skinny guys growing up. Yeah. I was always, I was always a big kid. Big, I grew no matter what. Um, but, I mean, every athlete, you know, uh, that's what they do. That's part of life. Again, don't go crazy with it. You know, you have to be healthy about it. Live it uh, as best you can, a healthy lifestyle. I mean, I, now I, I lead more of an organic vegetarian lifestyle now. Um, I lost some weight. I keep more lean. I don't I don't mess with the drugs. I don't do the anabolics no more. I don't do that. It's been many years. Yeah. I'm still big. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're still me, yoked on your Instagram. Me. You're jacked. I mean, <laughs> even when I walk down the street, they're asking me, hey, big guy, what do you do? I'm like, ah, my genetics. I've been training many years. <laughs> but everything in moderation, everything be healthy, live a healthy lifestyle, try to do good things. I'm a humanitarian, I hope. I feed the homeless once a week in the churches. I do oh, that. Oh, wow. I'm going to be doing some things for uh, families in need, build the uh, amusement park, the museums. Um, always have to give back the good things to people. It's good for your, your frequency, your energy, as they say, your vibration. I'm into that like, corny new age topics. <laughs> I'm into all that stuff. <laughs> that's the real, good things, you know. That's the real superhero stuff, though. <laughs> you have to do a really good thing. I mean, that's the real thing. You know, even if you give someone advice, you're also... You know, you, you know, you have people who are depressed. I get all the time, they're depressed, they're lonely, they want to commit suicide. And when you give somebody advice, you uplift their spirits, it's as if you save a life. Because right after that, they feel good. Oh, wow, you made me feel good. Oh, wow. I would never thought of that. And so, 
It just saved a life. That's a superhero trait. Exactly, yeah. You know, it's the real way to do it nowadays. <laughs> you know? That's awesome, man. For real. Without being, without being too corny. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Courtney's not bad, man. Courtney's really not bad. <laughs> All things in moderation. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but there are a lot of good things you could do. A lot of good humanitarian things to do, you know? Yeah. That's, that's awesome, yeah. Super cool. Glad to see you give it give it paint it back. The uh the uh success. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But yeah, I don't think we have any more questions. Uh you know, you okay. already mentioned the graphic novel. You know, hopefully some more movies coming out soon. Is there anything else you want to plug, let people know that you're doing soon? I mean, I know everything's uh, on hold, but... Just if anybody wants to say hello, don't get me on Instagram. You know, leave a comment. Get me on Facebook. Steel Chambers on Facebook. Or on Instagram, say hello. You know, I'm okay with that. Always say hello, you know, I don't mind. Awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, hey, man, we'll let you go. Once some of this stuff gets up and running, uh, you know, shoot me a text, message us on the Instagram. Anytime, DMs are open. Man, anytime, get in touch with me. No problem, buddy. Awesome. Thank you. yeah. You're a great thank guest, you. dude. Yeah, thank you, man. A real life superhero. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, thanks, man. Okay, guys. I'll see you. Stay safe. Take care. Okay.